Certain Affinity is back with another Forge tutorial. In this video, we're going to break down everything you should know about the additional game type labels we provided with the Ricochet game type. Releasing a new mode post release gave us a great opportunity to expand the abilities of Forge creators to create unique game types. As a result, there's several game type labels included with Ricochet that have unique properties for game type creation. To begin using the Forge Ball game type labels, make sure you're editing in Ricochet Multi Team. Any game types built using these labels should use Ricochet Multi-Team as their base variant. The Forge Ball settings aren't compatible with the normal Ricochet. Now before I begin going through these labels, I want to point out that this is all available in written form as well. The link for that is in the video description below. I highly recommend referring to that document when you aren't sure about something, as I won't be covering absolutely everything in this video. Now with all that said, let's take a look at the labels. These labels can be placed on any object, so let's go ahead and spawn a golf ball. First up is Rico Forge Ball. As you might expect, this is used to make an object serve as your ball. The team setting can be changed to determine who gets points for scoring with that object. For example, if you have a Warthog as the Forge Ball and set the team to Defender, the Defender team will get points regardless of who drives the Warthog into the goal. Now inside of the Advanced panel, we have Spawn Sequence and User Data that can be adjusted as well. However, we took some liberties with what spawn sequence is used for with the Forge Ball labels. For Rico Forge Ball, changing the spawn sequence will allow you to customize how many seconds after a ball is scored before it can be scored again. This allows you to add a countdown timer on scoring with the ball, which is useful for instances where the ball can be stuck sitting inside the goal for a while. Setting the spawn sequence to zero, the default, will make it so that you can only score a goal again after leaving the volume. In the past, we've gotten a lot of questions about what user data is meant to be used for. It's something which was left in specifically for the possibility of using it with custom options for future modes. With the Forge Ball settings, we are utilizing the user data field to determine how many points are awarded for scoring, allowing for more customization than the usual game type options. For Rico Forge Ball, the user data can be adjusted to determine how many points are awarded for scoring with the ball. Let's move on to Rico Forge Goal. These award points when objects with the Rico Forge Ball are placed inside. Just like the ball, points are awarded based on which team the goal is set to. For the spawn sequence, well, it gets a little bit complex. The spawn sequence is used to determine what happens when a goal is scored. To do this, we use what is called a bit mass to allow multiple things to happen at once. The spawn sequence can be set from any number from 0 to 7. 0 does nothing, 1 will delete the ball, 2 will delete the goal, and 4 will play the scoring explosion effect you see in default ricochet. Now the fact that this is a bit mask allows you to combine these. So 1 plus 2 equals 3, meaning that if you set the spawn sequence to 3, it will delete the ball and the goal. A spawn sequence of 7 would delete the ball, delete the goal, and play the explosion effect. Just like with the forge ball, the user data is used to determine how many points are awarded to the goal's team after scoring. Lastly, we have Rico Forge Zone. This is a special kind of Forge Ball goal which is meant to allow for sequential spawning of goals. They also allow each team to have their own active objective. The team setting determines which team the zone belongs to. Only that team can score in the zone, and the nav marker for the zone will only be visible to that team. The spawn sequence setting determines what order the Forge Zones will spawn, starting at 1. When you score in Zone 1, the zone will become hidden and zone 2 will become active. After completing all zones, it will loop around and begin again at 1. The user data setting is how many points are awarded for scoring in that zone. It awards points to the team which the zone is set to, regardless of who actually puts the ball in the zone. Now obviously, these labels are a bit more complex than usual. The emphasis here with the labels was to give as much flexibility as possible, with the expectation that people would take some time to read up on how they work. With that said, I want to again point to the video description where we have great documentation written up on what each setting does. Using these settings, you can create a lot of old favorites and some creative new modes as well. We've had a lot of fun experimenting and building out new modes using these labels. It's fairly easy to recreate Halo versions of sports modes in particular. You can also use falling objects as a scoring mechanism for fun minigames, since the user data values can be adjusted to allow for custom scoring. Combining these game type labels with trait zones and game type settings can give even more flexibility in mode creation. Ricochet is part of the Champions Bundle which is on sale now for 800 Microsoft points, and the mode will be released to everyone in a couple of weeks. 
We look forward to seeing what everyone creates using the new game type labels included with Ricochet. From almost a certain affinity to all of you, Forge on.